Welcome to this episode on manifesting with sacred imagery with the Magdalene Manifestation Cards artist, Christine Lucas. First off, before I welcome Christine, I just want to thank you for listening, for tuning in, and for being devoted to your evolution and consciousness, because it really takes all of us gathering together to, to shift and to expand. So I'm just kicking us off here with a wave of appreciation and love for your choice to be here and to be a part of our extended Divine Transmissions community. Now, before I welcome Christine, also, I want to share with you some exciting news that we're celebrating here to today, which is that the Magdalene Manifestation cards are officially published. Yay! We're actually airing this on the pub date of May 16th, 2023. And you can grab your deck by going to daniellehoffman.com forward slash cards. Now, if you're into manifesting and sacred geometry and art and color, you are just going to love this episode because we are going to share not only some juicy behind the scenes, uh, how the card deck came into being, which you'll have a front row seat to, yet also some tools that you can implement right away in manifesting with sacred imagery. So without further ado, welcome, Christine. So happy that you're here. Danielle, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. And on that note about welcoming everyone and thanking everyone who's tuning in, I was thinking about it this morning as I was preparing to talk to you about how the future users of the deck have been with us actually on many levels throughout this whole process. They have been part of the project. So this may be the first time they're consciously aware of what we've all been up to, but you know, a special thanks. And as you said, wave of gratitude to everyone who's been on this journey with us already. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and that really sparks for me that when the, the Magdalene codes came in, which originally were a part of our Magdalene Wealth Codes program, you know, as the Magdalens were bringing them in, they were very clear, like that this this these codes, these glyphs were for tens of thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of individuals. And so I'm really just happy that it's crossing that threshold where they're the same codes we use in our, in our core program to assist folks in actualizing and manifesting. And yet now they're spreading their wings. And absolutely, I remember as we were co-creating the, the glyphs, the, the sacred imagery that goes with each of the codes of love, we were always calling upon the higher selves who these cards, the, this body of work was in response to their asking and their calling. So I'm really glad that we, we started that way. So before we dive in more deeply about what are glyphs and sacred imagery and how do you manifest with them, let's share a little bit about our history, our experience together, because I think it's a really inspirational and also share a little bit, if you will, about your journey from uh, how you were working in corporate and now you have your own business with this sacred art and all the beautiful things that you're up to. Yeah, and I'd like to just insert here too this other theme because I think it just follows along what you were just saying about this Magdalene Renaissance. Like this is another thing, the power of community that has been coming up all week as I was preparing for the podcast how significant this time is for the Magdalene lineage, for people who are attracted to this work. And, you know, we think about Magdalene's as being this thousands of years ago thing. It's this, you know, past referencing. Historically, it's been a past referencing thing. We think about significant Magdalene's and their contributions. And now, well, and I should say in creating the deck, you know, we were connecting with a more, very much more cosmic energy or cosmic field of consciousness. And the message has been too about just igniting these forward facing Magdalene's into a whole new era. I remember when we were in France and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but I kept getting all this information about these Magdalene's being this new, more coherent harmonic of the Magdalene's. And I was, didn't know, <laughs> I didn't really know what that meant at the time. But there's a big significance to being able to operate in these multidimensional ways, being able to operate together. And that's some of what I wanted to talk about with our history and how 
I even got to the point where I was able to do that, <laughs> to be able to connect in that way. Yeah. And that, as you're talking about that, that really reminds me of the first uh, glyph that came in the Magdalene molecule. This, this was the second image of it, the hologram, because there's uh, for each of the, the cards, there's a, both a key card and a, a hologram card. And yet, uh, since you brought the power of community up, I just want to read the Magdalene molecule hologram power of community. When two or more gathered, magic happens, co-create with others for rapid materialization. And so as you're talking about the, the Magdalene Renaissance, and really that as the Magdalene's came in, they introduced themselves as well as like the Magdalene midwives, past, present, and future, uh, as well as my connection and yours as well. And, and, and I imagine those tuning in that we're all here to usher in a new paradigm. And so, yes, we have past lives of being connected to and the Magdalene lineage and the Magdalene energy, which also the Magdalene's have shared means like being an adept with energy. And yet it's also about ushering in these new energies and living in a new paradigm, which co-creation is really essential to. And I remember in France too, we had all these conversations about having this vision of greater community and co-creation and uh, having that rapid accelerators, accelerated materialization from partnering together. And for me, it was so cool to like, not only have the codes and the regular stuff that the guides and I do with the audios and the videos and, you know, the live sessions that we offer, uh, yet to have like physical, visual imagery that was an expression of, of the codes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because I feel like my story illustrates a bit of that arc of how, you know, I had, as you said, I had the corporate job, which I loved actually. And I worked with wonderful people and I, but I had that calling, that pull that there was something more, right? And when I think I read the, it was 2018, I read the Temple of the Tablets of Life book, right? And experienced that book as so much more than a book. I mean, I was so ignited by your work at that time. I mean, that was sort of like the business card in a way, right? Here, this is Danielle. And I was like, wow, I love this, right? And it, you know how it speaks to you so viscerally that when a couple of months later you were offering your divine light activation trip to France, I mean, I was like a full body yes on that. And sometimes like you don't even know what the yes is. I mean, I think this was one of those things where like, you're, you know, I use my discernment. This is so 100% for me and I'm just going to trust it because I don't exactly know why, <laughs> you know, I couldn't really put my finger on it, except that I felt that connection to the Magdalene's. I felt your work speaking to me. So I went and did the Alette Laban itinerary. And one of the things that did for me is it helped me remember important pieces of my past. That was one of the significant things too, you know, having spontaneous memories and recall. Um, and one thing that you're so good at, and I, I'm just gonna say I've done, as many people have on the path, you do many modalities, you try many things, but working with Danielle is something else. I mean, it's a needle mover. <laughs> hmm. So I just wanna say, you know, my gratitude to you, of course, for that. But this was one of the first times working with Danielle and the other women on the trip as well, to be able to work in and play in a multidimensional space with other people, which is something I love to do. I didn't even know it was a thing before that, that you could actually kind of go into this multidimensional realm and be there with other people. And so that's something that I, you know, absolutely love. And that divine light activation trip gave me a lot of pieces to my own puzzle. And I think it was right after that trip, you were offering quantum light program. And so I was sitting with like, is this for me? Now, meanwhile, I'm still doing my day job, you know? And you were talking to me a little bit about, I was like, tell me about this quantum light program. And you mentioned sacred architecture. And that was like, you know, I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I know that's for me, you know? That was like a big, big yes. So I did that program. And then we actually did one-on-one -on -one work together. So 
I think all told it was probably 15 or 16 months of working with you. And it was a crazy growth spurt for me in terms of just accelerating my remembering. And one of the things that I kind of wanted, you know, there were a couple of points that I wanted to bring out. And one of them was, I already knew how to do all this. I didn't, like, I didn't go, I didn't take a class with you and learn how to do art or be able to access those. It was more being able to access those parts that already knew how to do it. And that was something that I didn't realize going into it, but I already had spent, I don't know how many lifetimes working on being able to do that. And even though I had, you know, an extensive meditation practice before, you know, coming to you, before meeting you and starting work, working with you. I mean, I had meditated for, I mean, I don't want to age myself, but let's, it was like decades. <laughs> <laughs> and I would see symbols like in my meditation, you know, like that part wasn't new. The part that was new was like, okay, we're going to go into this multidimensional space. There are fields of consciousness in that space. Every body of work, I mean, this is something else I learned from you. Every body of work is a field of consciousness. You can tap into and connect to that field of consciousness. And what I'm getting into to here is how the deck is created and what sort of underpins all of that is that there is geometry and architecture in these fields of consciousness that are partners. Like these cards are, yes, they're cards and you can use them for divination, but they're also partners living breathing partners. And so my personal, I would say like one of my gifts is to be able to go into that space, interact in that space, access those fields of consciousness and sort of put a bookmark there, I guess I would say, so that someone else can hold a card at another time and access that field of consciousness. Now, did I learn that like, you know, in a quantum light class with you? No, but what happened was my system remembered how to work multidimensionally. I began to be able to access things that I hadn't been able to access before in this lifetime. And it made, I mean, and it's not just so that I can create art. I mean, I've, it's enriched my life in a lot of different ways, but all of that to just say that, you know, the trajectory from like, you know, being in meditation and being interested in these spiritual topics and conscious evolution, still working at my day job, and then having an opportunity to just really have the growth spurt or the big leap forward to be able to do things that you hadn't yet been able to access before and then to create things that are totally multidimensional. When we're talking about the Magdalene Renaissance, like if you can imagine a whole bunch of us being able to do that. And yes, you can use the cards as a divination tool and that's totally fine. But I feel like there are people that I'm speaking to right now who are going to also feel called to go, oh, yeah, that's for me. Like using their discernment, they're going to say, hey, that's for me, too, or something similar. And so I just want to kind of model that um, that process of how that all kind of came to all sort of back online. And I'll mm -hmm. pause now so that you can jump in and add anything that you want to hear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's so much uh, in what you shared that I love too about divine light activation, which is really reincarnating as our light, the incarnate self and, and with our current like miss mission, even though we've been on mission for a long time, there's still a refinement and an amplification and really tuning into your unique ascended masteries. And I love as well that it was like, always within you and I feel like that's something so unique about the guides and also the way that I love to work in terms of equality and equanimity and co-creation and and recognizing that there's a revolution in relationships where uh it where we're where I see you I see our clients as as partners and and everyone has a piece, a, a part of the sequence, like uh, what the guides talk about in divine light activation and to have that space to recall, because like, I didn't learn about what I do at career day, you know, <laughs> you didn't either, uh, yet to, to recognize that we need these new innovative light and love technologies that haven't ever existed on the earth star thus far in order to to go where we're going which is into greater states of love and co-creation so i really wanted to to share that and then also 
you know, as we're talking about Magdalene's and how the Magdalene codes are also beings of light, beings of love, that there are these 20 codes of love that came in first. And then after we had brought them all in, there was the four resource codes of yummy money, sublime time, uh, divine relationships and radiant energy, which are the four pillars of what the Magdalene's talk about in terms of multi D abundance, multi-dimensional abundance. And, and so to me, this is, and this is why we called it a manifestation deck. Yes. It, I think that word Oracle deck or divination, like it can be used as that tool. I use it that way where I'll have a question or I'll have a project. I'll, I'll, I'll be looking for uh, just some, some input and I'll, and I'll pull a card. And yet mostly the, the way that, that also I talk about in the guidebook, really inviting folks to use the cards is as a manifestation tool to actualize what matters most to us and uh, to, to bring that into fruition. So like sometimes, and I know you're a fan of the one card spread. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like when we call, when we, when we pull one card for the day, it's like calling in one of the Magdalene love beings, which is maybe Magdalene molecule, for example, or one of the codes is multi D abundance. And it's like having the multi D abundance Magdalene love being with us for the day in that, in that partnership. So of course, going back to quantum light practitioner, which is like DLA two, for those that may not have heard of it yet. Um, we, there was a lot talking about divine colors and so let's talk a little bit about colors. What's a glyph? What's sacred imagery? Yeah, absolutely. And one other point that sort of came into my mind as you were talking too is that, you know, as we bring ourselves more online, it's not like a cookie cutter thing. Like I couldn't have told you that this was going to be my jam, right? I mean, I could have told you that I thought about going to art school and I really loved art and it's something I've enjoyed throughout my life, even though I did, you know, 20 plus years in finance. Um, but it's just so interesting how everybody has these unique and cool things that they can do. And when they come together in collaboration, it's like, wow, you know, and no one could have predicted or no one could have said like, you should be like this. Like I, it's all was inside me. It just had to come out. And I think it's so neat how it's like this gift that you unwrap. And so, you know, as I was learning or relearning, re-remembering how to do this, um, like I said, with the Magda, as you said, with the Magdalene Molecule Power of Community, I love the pull one card, right? So last week when I was thinking about, you know, what would I like to talk about on the pod podcast, I pulled that Power of Community card and I was partnering with that card all day as it was informing me, like it's very, you know, it's important to talk about the Magdalene Renaissance. It's important for people to know that they have a piece of that puzzle. So I definitely use it that way. And there are some other kind of elements to it too, like you're alluding to color before. And I've noticed just in my journey, how much more important color became to me. My system almost craves it like food or nutrition at this point, like I need certain colors. And so even setting aside the glyphs or the symbols for a moment, I'm just kind of pointing out that the color can be speaking to you too. And I'm also, a, you know, an abstract painter. So sometimes, like I know for me, like turquoise is often a color that my system needs. And I have painted things just so that I can put them up so that my system can be nourished by it. I know you're a big fan of the teal, <laughs> you know, and it, I, it's like, I know your colors because I've been, I've been working with you, but the cards have the cards are about as multidimensional as we are, right? So that the color can speak to you. Also this, if you don't mind, if I go into the difference between the key and the hologram. Yes, part. yes, beautiful. But when we first started, and I took the first chapter, the first symbol that came out, which didn't have a name, a key. I mean, and we didn't know it was a key at that time, except that to me, it felt like it was an unlocking. It felt like it was a very active energy. It was an un unlocking. Um, and then there was a second symbol. So as we were exploring these chapters and the artwork, 
there was a second symbol that felt more like, I kind of would call it like the deep steep. Like it was almost like a temple. Like you just wanted to sit with it and crawl in it. And at least I did. <laughs> and, and so as we were kind of unfolding, like what, you know, what, how they were going to, how the energies were going to be represented in form, I would go into this meditative state. I would go into this multidimensional like space that I go into where everything's kind of geometry and form. And I would translate as a, you know, connect to that energy and translate it into a symbol. So it was interesting that there were sort of two different flavors to each one, like that masculine feminine flavor. And you could, you know, it's interesting because we talked about, yes, you can do the one card pull, which I love to do, but I also am sort of a meditator at heart. So I love to meditate with them. Like just sit with them, gaze at them, meditate with them. Some people are journalers. You know, I tend to be more of a meditator, but I can see how you could sit with it and journal. And it's interesting, the ability to explore them, to explore them individually, like one card, or to pair them together and explore them. Like you said, it's like you can spend the day with them, or you can spend the day with a, you know, a pair of them and let them inform you. So I just feel like this open architecture approach, right? It's like you're able to access the energy using the card and then whatever you choose or feel to explore with them, you know, is up to you. So I love the fact that they will work with you sort of wherever you are. And if you take a card today and you let it sit and inform you and you partner with it, and then a month from now you do it again it's a totally different experience so I just kind of wanted to point out the sort of flexibility to have them fit your own unique style mm -hmm. and I'll pause there in case you want to talk a little bit more about that yes well the the hologram I absolutely agree like when I do a spread and I also notice like if I'm doing a, a larger spread for example so one of the ways that you can manifest with using the sacred imagery which I also find is very unique and different and innovative about the Magdalene codes is that you can create altars or energy vortexes for your, what the Magdalene's call your love conceptions, what you're choosing to create. And so when, when I'm doing a, a larger spread, I notice like how many holograms showed up, how many keys showed up. And I absolutely love, I feel like that word hologram is, is so key because like you, I feel like I often am sitting inside of a multidimensional environment. So of course, the images are in the 3D plane. They look, you know, like flat on the card, uh, whatever that is, two-dimensional. And yet they, to me, they will surround my field. And it's like, I'm sitting inside of the multidimensional version of, of that, especially the hologram. And, uh, and also that the key is often, uh, there's winks and nods and, and, and repetition of the key in the hologram, which speaks to the yin and the yang. And also what I found was so cool because at the base of the Magdalene codes of love, it's about love being, being a love being opening our hearts, recognizing that as a lot of light workers and like, it hasn't been your first rodeo. A lot of folks that work with us, like you've already been on your path for, for a while, even if it's newer consciously. Uh, and yet like at one point in order for us to integrate all the light, all the wisdom, it needs to be embodied through the love and, and that descension process. And so the heart has to be open. And, and on my journey, it was so clear when the Magdalene's came in that that was like my next leading wave of consciousness, even though I'd done so much about opening the heart to really have that wider bandwidth. So they, they work really amazing together. And when the Magdalene's came in, even though I think of this system, like creating abundance through love, being more of a return of the feminine ways of manifesting, they came in in sacred union. And the guides have always been about the sacred union. Even when I remember back in the day, like when the whole feminine rising thing started coming, they're always like sacred union, sacred union, sacred union. 
And so that they came in in sacred union, that the code of love uh, in, in the being of love that is the Magdalene code came in in sacred union. And then they were expressed in the hologram and in the key. And so my my favorite, one of my favorite spreads as well, though I tend to draw three, like I just like things in threes, is the uh, the two card spread where you you pull one card and then you you search through the deck for if you pulled the Magdalene key card for Magdalene molecule key card, for example, which is about being a confident creator, your creations have a divine design, hold a line of sight of positive expectations to make them inevitable. So if I pull this one, then I'm going to search through the deck and then pull the second one and, and then look at them next to each other. And that that really creates a sacred union, balances the feminine and the masculine, the being state, the action state, so that the multi D abundance, uh, and of course we go more into this in the program than the deck, it can already get started with the deck that multi D abundance is also created and leveraged from our Magdalene energy, from resting states, from the horizontal plane, uh, from like leaping while we sleep. So I, another way that you can manifest with sacred imagery in these codes is to do a, an energy vortex before you go to sleep, like where you have an intention and then you create this energy vortex so that whatever you're choosing to, to create from energy into form has an energetic container that's closer to the physical plane in order for it, for it to actualize. So that's another way that the sacred imagery works. And I notice like it balances the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. So would you say more about like what you notice as you're gazing on the glyphs, uh, like what happens in your system? Because it's going to be unique to each of us. If someone is more kinesthetic or they have that knowing, they'll just have a sense of knowing it may be more visual. They might hear something. Yeah. And I actually, when you were talking about how, you know, like we were saying, like sort of steep and it, the holograms are like a temple. Well, the book, your books are like that too, right? You just do sort of, um, and for me, yeah, I have these it really felt physical senses where it's like, I feel like I'm being surrounded or hugged by the energy. I can really physically feel the energies. The other thing too, I think about this, um, the sacred union and that dance between the masculine and the feminine. Like I know for me, you know, I noticed them working with me. Like, for example, I'll be working on a project like this project. We'll use this project as an example, right? So there were website updates that had to happen. You know, there were real physical things that had to happen. You know, I know you and I are both like proponents of, you know, we're conscious people. We're committed to our evolution. We're committed to this path. And we're real people with real lives that we can, you know, where we're, things should be practical, you should, right? So here's like the nuts and bolts of it too. For me, it's like, I'm, I'm working through things that are necessary for the launch. And then there's parts of me that are showing up in resistance, like through the process, right? There are parts of me that are, I can feel they're getting in the way. I don't, you know, and it was like, interesting how I would have to do something active in the physical world. And then I would have to tend to something inside in my being that wasn't on board, right? And there's this aspect of the cards that are really building alignment and coherence in your system. And as we said, that's part of that greater harmonic, that's part of that Magdalene Renaissance, right? Is to bring ourselves into more alignment so that we are here as more of who we really are. And I love how the cards sort of mirror that dance, right? Where you have things that you need to do in your physical life in order to be that higher expression of yourself. And then you also have parts inside of you that need to come into greater alignment so that you're kind of not fighting yourself while you're doing it, right? Like there's this inner synergy and then there's this external synergy. So I wanted to just reflect back that part of it, like that it's like this dance. It's like there are multidimensional parts within you that are trying to line up for the highest expression. And they're here today because Sublime Time <laughs> was the card that I pulled right before the call, which that is one of the elements about Sublime Time. But it's like to, uh, it's an honoring of the fact that we are multidimensional and that there are parts of us 
that are also looking for alignment so that they can express externally in a way that reflects what's going on internally. And I think like that's part of, I know you've said this before too, that as you're creating your own body of work, you get more healing from creating your own body of work at, at some point than you do from you know learning from another person's body of work. But the cards partnered with me through my whole process of creating that body of work and bringing it into form, that sort of back and forth dance. And I know, I mean, I know you've had experiences of that too, that you can speak to. So I'll pause here um, to just see what you have to comment on that. Yeah, well, I remember when, uh, and I know as we're wrapping up here, we could like talk forever, uh, yet as we're kind of winding down, I remember that when you were bringing in the glyphs, so I want to make sure to ask you, like, what is a glyph to you? And then, but when you were bringing the glyphs, Freedom and my beloved and I were hiking uh, a part of the Camino, and it was so cool because you would send different options and we met also live on zoom and and different colors and we play with it and I would check in with the guides or just my system like oh something here energetically like we it, we were refining and evolving and uh sometimes it was like an energetic handshake and then as it, as the the emanation of the glyph which of course is the emanation of the code was taking form. And, and while I was hiking, you know, the slower vibrational BME filters come up, it's natural, like the body's going, okay, this hurts after hiking so many miles, or I'm hungry, when am I going to eat what I could be at home, uh, whatever the, the BME filters are. And you sent me the magic of love code, which like has this beautiful movement, like very alive. And I would do the affirmations. And as a part of the Ma Magdalene manifestation toolkit, when you uh, go to danielhoffman.cards uh, and then you, from there, go and buy the card deck from Amazon, you come back, enter your Amazon number on the page. Uh, you have access to this Magdalene manifestation toolkit. And a part of the toolkit is is all the images in one place, which I love the open architecture. Sometimes I'll just spread them all out so I can see the whole system together. But this affirmation reference sheet that we pulled together is, is so beautiful. So there's the affirmation, there's the key glyph, the hologram glyph. And that day, like, because the, the magic of love glyph is, is like a, a circle, right? Like it, it moves it, a spiral. Like I just felt like when I was walking, it was just, I don't know, almost like brushing my cells inside and was accompanying me on, on the walk. So as we're moving towards a place of completion, one, what's a glyph? And two, as they were coming in, like, was there one that you just felt like you were energetically so thirsty for? Because one of the things that I think is the reason why this helps folks manifest like crazy uh, is because we require frequencies and vibrations that haven't existed thus far, like emerald, uh, emerald uh, love, where we're connecting to the love of animals and nature and crystals and nourishing our system from those levels. So in answer to your question, what is a glyph? A glyph is, I would say, it's like an energetic bookmark so that you can access a field of consciousness. That is how I would describe a glyph. Um, it's frequency art. I think it's frequency art and it's a little bit different in the sense that it connects directly to a body of work, right? So the signature energy of a chapter of a book is a great example. Um, so that I guess would be my short answer to what is a glyph. Now, do I have some that I partner with all the time? I do. Uh, the I can't seem to get over the Magdalene Molecule, the Power of Community Hologram card. Like that one just speaks to me. And I think part of it is because it was, you know, within the first pair that I did. Um, so I think that's part of it. I also think part of it is because I know you're a stand and I'm a stand too for the Power of Community and multidimensional collaboration. Um, and then of course, you know, 
I'm a, I'm a galaxy girl, so star, star love also speaks to me a lot. But I know we do have sort of our um, end to mind relationship. You know, it's hard because it's like, as you think about it, you're just like, oh, and I love that one. And it's I love like, that which one. one of your kids well, is your they're favorite, like all right? Like my babies, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and they all have their different characteristics. So, yeah. And, but just to say, too, I know that we're wrapping up here, but I just want to say, too, that I, I love that the cards and the glyphs are multidimensional because we're becoming so multidimensional. And like you, you, I feel like you're a great example of the power of this to, to have work, have a book that's not really a book. You know, it's a book and it's a multidimensional environment. And I think there are a lot of coaches and healers and thought leaders out there that have their bodies of work and they're also multidimensional. And to be able to kind of weave frequency in these energetic environments together. I do think that's part of the Magdalene Renaissance to have our bodies of work really feel, like viscerally feel as multidimensional as we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. So any last uh, words you would leave us with? Of course, uh, inviting you if you're feeling called to reach out to Christine Lucas, if you have a card deck, you know, I remember uh, it was just, I knew that there were cards, but the whole like finding an illustrator that gets the energy and the frequency and also the beauty and the harmony and the consistency and like all the, from the higher planes to the very detailed level, like I feel like you embody that so beautifully. And that's also really uh, for me as well. So you work with authors, you just say a little bit more like what you're up to and then your, your website yeah, and, also having the notes. Yeah. But, and the website is christinelucasart.com. And I think part two of what I do is help to anchor these bodies of work here. There is this, like some part of this process, it's almost like tethering it into this realm, you know? Um, so yeah, I've worked on card decks and books and, and other projects, you know, program materials, um, any of that. And I just love that multidimensional collaboration. I love the evolution of the body of work, like really bringing it into a physicalized, in a physicalized way. Um, and I love collaborating with other people that are really committed on this journey. Like, I just think it's beautiful the way that we're all supporting each other. I mean, I think you're a great example of that. You support me, I support you. Like, I really believe in what you do. And so I just think that there's, um, Sometimes there's just these opportunities for these just like divine appointments where we just mm -hmm. really help each other to launch whatever it is that we're up to. So I guess in, in, in terms of final words, you know, of course, my heartfelt thanks to you, Danielle. And I really hope that people love the deck. I'm, you know, it was designed with the future clients and customers in mind. And I just hope people find it supportive. It certainly was a pleasure for us to create them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Christine, for our partnership and for being the phenomenal artist that you are and for helping me midwife this body of work into visual form. And thank you for tuning in. We love hearing from you. We'd love to uh, have you share what code of love, what glyph is is uh, one of your faves or that you're uh, really feeling aligned with and coherent with. And just a reminder to not only purchase yet on Amazon and wherever books are sold, yet to also pick up your Magdalene Manifestation Toolkit at daniellehoffman.com forward slash cards. It has an incredible Meet the Magdalene's uh, guided meditation so that you can forge an even, even deeper and more intimate connection with the Magdalene's as a part of your personal manifestation team. And also includes this reference sheet of the 24 glyphs and the affirmations that go with them, which is also just another powerful way to be integrating the energies. And then it also has a yummy money workshop which uh, is one of the primary resource codes, one of the, the pillars of multi-D abundance because your mission requires resources, time, energy, 
uh, relationships and money. So invite you to pick up the deck and uh, be in touch with what your favorite Magdalene code is or which one tends to show up because I notice I'll start pulling, I'll do different spreads and there's the same code again. Like I pull multi D abundance a lot, uh, for example. All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here and see you in the deck.